Animated national discussions continue to trail former President Odibisha Gwabasage's letter to the incumbent president, mm. uh, Buhari, mm. asking him to not to run for a second term and to go home and rest. What's your reaction to this? Well, um, what Obasan just said was timely. Timely because uh, you don't need the wisdom of Solomon to know that Nigerians have been disappointed in the current administration, mm. especially because it came in at a time when the nation needed wonders. And that administration promised it was going to do wonders. Now, some three years after the line, and um, some one year before another political dispensation, uh, it's getting clearer by the day to Nigerians that this man is not capable of doing the basic, let alone the wonders. That is the pulse of the Nigerian polity as of now. Things have gone worse. The economy is bad. Um, security has been becoming more questionable. As if Boko Haram was not enough, Fulani headsmen started killing the people in millions. And one will begin to wonder, what was it that Boko Haram did that the headsmen have not done? That generally is the pulse of the policy. So Obasanjo's speech, or letter, as the case may be, came at the right time. Having said that, Obasujo himself as a person lack moral ground to say what he said. Exactly. That would have been know him fully well. Why okay. why why you why want why to why me? Why exactly. That's okay. Exactly. <laughs> because that, that, there's, there's been questions the moral credibility mm, of an mm, Obasujo mm, to mm, actually write such mm, a letter, mm, mm, considering the fact that he, some have argued mm, that, I mean, he, he, he wanted a third term. Mm, I mean, why would he not be, be uh, uh, on my, what ground would he? My, my brother, not just the third term issue. If you go historical from 1976 and you trace an Obasanjo till date, what you see is that he is the beginning, the alpha and omega of every disaster. And I'm saying this with all sense of emphasis. It's the beginning and the end, alpha and omega, of every disaster that has ever occurred to Nigeria. Poverty, give it to Obasanjo. Insecurity, give it to Obasanjo. State terrorism and violence against citizens, give it to Obasanjo. Remember the burning of Kalakuta Republic? Remember the killing of Nigerian students during Alimos Go? How many will you count? And then during his presidency, you remember the number of politicians who were assassinated politically under questionable circumstances, including, and not limited to, a sitting attorney general of the Federation. Now, somebody like that was in presidency and he spent 16 billion naira generating darkness instead of electricity. The nation moved from sorrow to tears and became what Felani Kulako Kuti will always call country of pains. Someone who ran a country like that and still wanted a second term or third term, I beg your pardon, could not have been seen as anything else but devil in Nigeria. So such a person does not have the legal, the moral, even the spiritual ground to advise a sitting president who innocently got into power thinking it was going to be all Uhuru, yeah. who also innocently only discovered that Nigeria is too complex beyond what an individual could do. I tell people that what happened to us in 2015 was like hypnotism. Granted, the nation was going bad. Granted, the economy was not going well the way we expected. And so Nigerians wanted solution. And they now went for somebody who had no CV to correct the errors. Take an example in the case of a university. We all know that a university is an academic institution. It is meant for teachers and learners. Now someday you have a university where things aren't going well. Teachers aren't teaching well. Learners aren't learning well. 
researches are not going the way they are supposed to go. And then the Council of Universities suddenly says, okay, I know what to do. I bring in a pastor of a very big church because he's holy, he doesn't steal money to come and be vice chancellor. That is the best way to kill that university. And I tell you, it's going to die immediately. That is what happened to Nigeria in 2015. Granted, things were going the way they were going, and people were not satisfied. It could be exaggerated. I don't want to be political. But bringing in Buhari to head the administration will raise the question on what CV. And what everybody was saying is that it's not corrupt. It's not corrupt. Does it take not being corrupt to ruin and run a nation? The answer, in my view, is no. And that is the extent to which we have driven our country. That point being made, it still does not justify that Nandoba Sunjo, who destroyed Nigeria till this moment, will still be the one correcting Mr. President. I think you should go and see that. He <laughs> indeed needs rest, not the president who is sitting there. Because the man innocently took a job that he was not qualified for. And I don't see him performing anything. So I'm not disappointed because I never at all expected anything from him right from the onset. Uh, some have also faulted the basis for Basojo to have, you know, make such a public criticism mm. against the president. Mm. And that it, 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 it's, it, it should have been like a backroom, you know, uh, discussion and that it erodes the institution of the presidency. Well, if you look at Basojo well, as a person, you will see that um, he likes to create uniqueness for himself in everything mm -hmm. he does. And to that extent, I respect him because uh, personalities should stand out in everything. Um, those who are crying wolf now that Obasanjo should not have made that letter or speech public, he should have made it a backdoor thing. Did they cry like that in 2015 when Obasanjo did the same thing to President Jonathan? Did they? cry like that in 2015 when Obasanjo publicly tore the identity card of the party the under Christian. which he served Nigeria for six or eight years. So if he did it that time and people were in crying wool, everybody folded hand, began to praise and you know do everything in his favor, why is it now that they are doing that? I think they are biased, they are not objective at all. I feel it is the choice of Mr. Obasanjo to do what he wants to do to anybody. After all, we are in a democracy. What we should be talking about is whether or not what he said, he had the moral ground to say it. And I'm declaring with no sense of doubt that Obasanjo has no ground to say what he said to correct President Buhari because he is 10 times worse. Now, let's look at the content of Obasanjo's letter, sir. Mm. And um, he actually forthrightly addressed the traumatized citizenry. And he itemized some of the issues that, you know, uh, concerns Nigerians. Mm. That the president, for example, does not grasp the economy. Mm. He has issues with uh, foreign policies. Mm. Then the issue, the handling of the a headsman crisis, the mm. Fulani headsman crisis, mm. and the issue of uh, nepotism in political mm. appointments and all mm. the rest of it. Mm. Are these not fundamental issues that should be addressed by this president? Absolutely, I agree. They are fundamental issues, and they ought to have been addressed, not even what we should address now. And that is why, when I started my speech, I told you that what Obasanjo did was timely. It was correct, it was true. But the emphasis is that it's like the kettle calling the cooking pot black. The two of them are not only black, they are ugly. I am referring to a Sonja in terms of what he said to power. Having said that, let's pick the issues one by one. Nepotism, okay? Um, clannishness are some of the two things that Obasanjo has accused President Buhari of doing. In my view, Obasanjo was equally guilty of that during his tenure. And that is why I said he didn't have a moral ground. In any event, will Nigerians ever, 
expect anything short of nepotism and clannishness from a governor, I mean, from a president who was baptized to power suddenly. He contested the election two, three times. Nigerians said no. And the grounds on which they said no were clear to the people. He was a fundamentalist. He was, he had no tolerance for opposition. He was a military dictator by blood countenance. Nigerians said no. But see, election is a very funny scenario. The political elite will go into their meetings mm -hmm. and concoct an individual for you, baptize that individual, and present him to you as saint overnight. And so somebody was rejected many times by Nigerian people, suddenly became the song of the streets. Say Baba, say Baba, say Baba. Forget him. The critical and fundamental issues that made Nigerians reject the man in the first place. This is the result, my brother. Nepotism, um, clannishness. Now, coming back to economy, the best way to answer that question is to go back to the analogy that I gave to you. A sick university seeking solution only went ahead to get a pastor to head the university <laughs> because the pastor is not corrupt. <laughs> what he's going to get is what we are going to get. On what CV did anybody bring in an Obas I mean, a Buhari to rule Nigeria? Was he an economist? Was he a policymaker? So you don't expect anything different from what had been going on in terms of perambulation when it comes to his foreign policy, his economy policy. You don't know something, you can't give it. You cannot give what you don't know. And it is worse because the arrogance did not even allow the current administration to seek help where necessary. I always say this to my friend when we are in informal setting. I'm not too sure it's something I can say on air, but I, I don't give a damn. It doesn't matter. I said, if I become the president of this country tomorrow, the first thing I'm going to do is ban football. <laughs> Nobody will play football or send anybody to abroad to play football. Because if you look at the budget that Nigerian people spend on football, you go to the world to get the best players and the best coaches, and you pay them in millions just to play football? Why don't you, as an administration, go to the best part of the world to get the best economics to manage your economy so that you can survive as a nation? If you do that to football, why don't you do that to politics? Why don't you do that to economy? Why don't you do that to foreign policy? But we're here, spending money on going to Mecca, going to Jerusalem, Saudi Arabia, to do uh, pilgrimage all in the name of religion. Does religion move a nation forward? You go to the world spending billions of naira to look for best coaches in football, in uh, Rockies, in whatever, I don't know the sport, just to play ball and jump around. Does sport elevate a nation? Nations that are challenging the West today in terms of the Asia, you know, that you are, and I know, are they great simply because they invested in sports? Huh? Or they are great simply because they deliberately implemented programs that turned around their economy. Nigerians, as the people, have not been playing their role. And if there's anything I'm going to respect in what Obasanjo just said in that letter, it is the fact that a government can go astray, but the people in a democracy must not go astray. To me, Buhari has not gone astray because he never promised anybody anything from the beginning. I'm not disappointed. It is Nigerian people who have gone astray. Because the moment we finished the euphoria of, say, Babaism, and Buhari was announced as president, all of us went back to sleep, expecting miracle for somebody who didn't even have the basic qualification to do it. And this is where we are today. If the civil society had been very strong, if the you know, pressure groups, the interest groups have been very strong, I don't see this administration going this far in retrogressing the political and economic, you know, stance of the country. But here we are. It's a sad thing. I, I think I should that's, agree. That's, that, 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 that's so sad. So what's your response to me tagging some ministers who I was asked about um, about the public mood mm. you know, that, uh, that is generate, being generated by that later? and the response of the federal government. Mm, well, I think we should start from the trigger made by uh, live movement. Um, I often say that I don't envy 
the Minister of Information mm. because he has one of the most difficult jobs in the world, you know. So I don't envy him. When you are given the responsibility to sell uh, whatever you want to sell, whether it is black or red or mm. green or white elephant project, mm. and you must sell it anyway because of the nature of politics in Nigeria, mm. politics of the belly, politics mm. of what I must chop, not politics of truth, ideology, or objectivity. So um, when you find yourself in that situation, you cannot but pity um, the Minister of Information. No, but it to you know, address what he said, he gave in some um, economic indices, which in my view are very bogus, uh, deceptive, sometimes outright falsehood, you know, uh, because, you know, economic is not rocket science. I mean, you go back to your secondary school, you will define economic as a social science. If something is social science, it means the laboratory is the society. Mm. You don't need to go into titration and uh, measurement or heat analysis to do mm. it. The society is the laboratory of economics. Now, you go on the streets of Lagos and find out from people, please, your life now and your life from three years ago, which mm. is better. Mm. You get the real answer, the pragmatic and practical answer. You go to the embassies. Let them give the records of Nigerians who are desperate to leave this country now, including to Kotonou and Ghana. Mm. Those who are desperate to leave this country now, compared to those who were desperate like that five, six years ago, the answer you get is the true answer. So all this Alakowe mentality of um, bringing in foreign economic theories and textbook economic indices to explain the issue, to me, will not be in the interest of Nigerian people. Things are really bad economically, and we must accept that as a basis of starting to look for solution, as the case may be. Now, um, politics, you know what it is. That will come up again uh, from opinions and counter opinions. And so you see ministers who have gone to design t shirts mm. from whose money? The public money. They have gone to make baseball cards mm. from whose money? The public money. It's a case of stakeholders and vested interests. Those ministers, those characters, are busy portraying and pursuing their own private vested okay, interests okay. to become this or that tomorrow. That's not a condemnation because human beings, by nature, are political animals, and it's expected that they do that. Part of our social statement mm made during the later includes a statement that Nigeria has only one choice. Mm. Coalition of the concerned and the willing, mm. ready for positive and drastic change, mm. progress and involvement. Mm. Now, what do you think is the best direction for Nigeria's political future? Mm. Are we looking at the third force of the party mm. or that? Mm. Yeah, Basunjo saying that uh, Nigeria has only one choice. Again, my view is highly illiterate. I mean, um, the moment somebody says only one way is the way, then you begin to see the person as not intelligent enough to see as many ways as possible. There are many ways to the market. In as much as I want to say that we need a coalition of good-minded statesmen in Nigeria, those who go into politics not to eat or drink, mm. those who will go into politics because they feel my children are here, mm. my cousins are here, if I sleep in the Lord tomorrow, what happens to them? We need a coalition of people like this to be able to move the country forward. Unfortunately, my brother, we don't have many on ground. The dominant class in Nigeria today, including the political elites, are not part of this country. They are just Nigerians by virtue of carrying the green passport. But in everything, sociologically, socially, in fact, spiritually, they are not Nigerians. Spiritually, they are either members of Saudi Arabia community or Jerusalem community. Sociologically, all their kids school abroad. They are citizens of UK and US. So they are not stakeholders here. Their own situation is what Yoruba has called Toba Baje Atuka. And that is what they are doing and that is how we are doing it. So if we are going to get such people, I, I, I am afraid we should begin by addressing certain issues and formulating certain policy. And that is why I am bitter about President Buhari, who came in on 
what I call an unprecedented sentiment of the Nigerian people. It was only sentiment that brought him in. Oh, he's clean, he doesn't steal money, he's going to change things. Now, he came in and he continued to do the same thing that the political elite before him had been doing. Hospitals are not working. You are going to London to treat yourself. Who tells you that a man cannot be treated at loot? You know? If, okay, if they cannot be treated at loot, I mean, if I can't be, why don't you import the best, you know, medical doctor from wherever you are and tell him, go and teach my people to do it so that if another person falls, I don't have to go again. So you see that the same thing they condemn people for is the same thing they are coming to do. Now, if we want to correct it as a matter of policy, any serious minded president who comes to Nigeria today should first make the policy that look, henceforth, nobody goes abroad to treat himself. If you are sick and you can't get treatment, you look, die. After all, those who go to London also always yeah. come back dying. And then you waste more money to fly them, increasing the economy of Britain. You buy COVID over there, increasing the economy of Britain. That is not how to grow a nation. Also, make the policy that in education, once you are in the public service, your children must attend public schools. You can't be spending public money to all private pockets. That's criminal. Economies don't move that way. In UK, in America, in Sweden, and all these countries that our people desperately run to, the best schools are the public schools. The worst schools are the private schools. Why don't we formulate such policies here? If we do, then the children of the minister will attend a Dan Lekoko Community High School. The children of the governor will attend Kukunduku High School. And we know that their children are here. They are not part of UK and America. They are stakeholders here. Then people will now come together to form that coalition, which Obasanjo refers to in his letter. That coalition will now move forward to say, hey, I'm stakeholder in this country. I don't have any other citizenship. I am Nigerian, and I got to do everything possible to make sure that this country survives. Until such policies are made, the dream will still continue to be a mirage. We will not move. We will continue to do what Fela again called Akuna Kuna, senior brother of Palambulator. I will move. <laughs> it's, it's just a pity. Dr. Wankai, we really yeah. appreciate you coming in. Thank you very Thank much you for very this much. opportunity. If we, if we allow you to continue to go <laughs> on, you have to hunt on and on. Thank you very much for your insightful analysis. Thank you. Have a nice day.